All right, what's up everybody? Emily Duplass is here from Rental Rookie. I am jumping in the group tonight for our third day of our five day challenge, all about discovering the step-by-step -step process to analyzing rental properties for cash flow. I'm excited to be back here with you tonight. Just getting my laptop set up so that I can make sure things are working tech-wise. I hope that everybody had a great day. I can tell you here in Western Pennsylvania, it was a beautiful day. I think we were in the 80s, which is finally, after months and months and what seemed like the longest winter ever, we're finally getting some nice weather. So that is definitely nice, but I am excited to be here. We have had two really good days of um, challenge training so far the last two nights have been really great super engaged people are asking questions commenting <clears throat> and that's exactly what i want to see from all of you because when push comes to shove you're going to get out of this as much as you put into it and that's really you know something to to note for anything that you do in life but especially with learning about investing in rental property and real estate the more you put in, the more you're going to get out. So the last two nights throughout our five-day challenge, we have been talking about, um, we talked about understanding investing terms so that you'd be able to talk the talk, walk the walk, and talk the talk. Um, last night, we talked about listings, what you need to look for on listings, questions you should be asking, follow-up questions. Um, I had a, an assignment for you both nights. The first night was a quiz. Last night, I had a listing, a little scavenger hunt on a listing assignment for you to play around with. And tonight, we're going to be talking about return on investment. So like I mentioned last night and tonight, um, are a little bit shorter trainings. They won't be as long. Tomorrow night will probably be a little bit longer because we are going to be jumping into um, talking about and me actually walking you through a property analysis. So that'll take some time. But tonight we're really going to focus on return on investment. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. We got a couple people in here. I'm sure some more will be popping in as we go, but we're a couple minutes past eight and I want to go ahead and get started for all of you. So our goals for today, our training goals, my goal for you is to be able to understand the concept of a return on investment and calculate, be able to then actually calculate a potential ROI using the numbers provided. So this is you know, what I'm hoping for you to be able to get out of tonight's training, for you to be able to say, you know, be able to, in your own words, describe what a, um, return on investment is, but also be able to actually sit down and calculate it. So before I get going, let me know if you can hear me and see me. I know we got a couple people in here already. Melissa's here. Christy's here. That's great. Um, but I just want to make sure before I actually start jumping into the meat of this that you all can hear me and see my slides. All right. Let me know. All right, also, housekeeping, don't forget to, oh, thank you, perfect. Thanks, Christy and Melissa, for letting me know that you can hear me and see me, perfect. All right, don't forget to download the entire five-day challenge workbook. You can head on over to rentalrookie.com slash challenge workbook. That's where you're going to find all the coordinating documents that go along with this challenge. So make sure if you haven't done that, that you grab that. And I actually want to start by asking you a question. So go ahead in the comment section. I want to know what intimidates you the most about running numbers on potential deals. So just take a second. I'm already needing a drink of water. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Being nine months pregnant is no joke. Um, but in the comment section, let me know what intimidates you the most about running numbers on potential deals. I know... You know, when we first got started way back when, I it, the whole process was intimidating for me. It wasn't just the running the numbers. But I think what intimidated me the most when it came to running numbers was the fact that there was so much pressure, I guess, or weight on, you know, making sure that you run the numbers the right way. Uh, that that kind of scared me, like, I shouldn't say kind of, that scared the daylights out of me because I was like, you know, this is, when push comes to shove, your ability to analyze properties and analyze potential deals and know what numbers to look for and all that sort of stuff 
Um, I mean, that's like make or break whether or not how well you do in this uh, in this game and in this real estate investing world. So that was really intimidating for me. Um, so yeah, let me know. I want to know. Perfect. Actually figuring out closing costs into total initial investment up front. Yeah, definitely. If you don't have um, a lot of experience with buying property, yeah, that's definitely a number that you probably have no idea how to actually calculate. Um, and it's different everywhere. You know, it really kind of depends on, oh my gosh, a number of things. Um, it's going to depend on, you know, the company that you're going through, if you get any kind of seller credit or anything like that, that you get to be able to, you know, use at closing. I know we've bought properties where we literally brought like no extra money to the table. We've bought properties where we've had to bring three, five thousand dollars when it came to closing costs, just depending on the deal, the the agencies that we use, the the lender fees, and all of that sort of stuff. So that's definitely um, definitely a good one. Christy, you said trying to figure out what a good deal is. Yeah, absolutely. Since you're just starting out, should I start with a low price property? I'm so glad that you asked that question, Christy. Um, and I actually, you had mentioned that and commented that on another um, on another video from this week. So it actually, I pulled something in here tonight to actually answer that specific question. So um, hopefully by the end, let me know if uh, if you have an answer to the whole idea of should I start with a low price property. Um, because I want to shift your focus from maybe necessarily the price itself to really focusing on the return. So thanks for sharing. I appreciate that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's jump in and talk about what a return on investment is, and then we'll actually determine how to calculate it. So an ROI is calculated to essentially let you know the percentage of your return on the money that you invest, right? So, you know, it's, it's, it, it means what the words say. I mean, return on investment. So we put money into some sort of investment. We expect to make some money back on that, right? So the ROI is the percentage of the money that we actually earn back, that we make off of that money that is invested. So when we look at it in the, the perspective of real estate, this is calculated by basically taking the total net income that you make in a year and dividing it by the total cash that you invested in the property. And this is, you know, the quintessential cash on cash return on investment um, formula that you're going to use. And I'll break it down for you here in a minute. But I want to, before I kind of break it down and show you exactly what it is, I want you to know why an ROI is important. <laughs> Determining the ROI on your investment, like essentially tells you hands down how good of an investment that is, and the rate of return that particular investment is going to make for you. So this little tiny percentage, right, like this one number, this percentage that you're going to calculate, you know, week in and week out as you start to get better at running numbers on deals and looking at deals and get more, you know, seasoned as an investor, and hopefully buy that first property eventually or buy that next property depending on where you are, that little percentage that you're going to be running is going to bear so much weight. And like I said earlier, that was one of the things that freaked the heck out of me because uh, you know, that percentage, that 10%, that 12%, that 2%, that 4% is going to tell you whether or not you should invest in that property. And while that sounds overwhelming and kind of like, holy crap, I need to make sure I do this right. At the same time, um, I think on the positive end, it's like, that's pretty sweet that we can kind of figure that out ahead of time, right, with real estate and that we, you know, we don't have to wait a couple of years into an investment and just guess, right? It's predictable. It's um, steady and it's predictable, which makes one of the coolest things about investing in rental property is the tangibility nature of it and the fact that we can predict what we're going to make on a property. And why else it's important without understanding this crucial figure? Um, you're basically blindly going to be putting your money into an investment with no idea if it's making you money or losing you money. So you can see my picture there. You're basically just, you know, covering your eyes and throwing your money into a, a well and having no idea. So if you don't know how to calculate this number or you just buy a property and you don't calculate this number at all, you it's a shot in the dark. You have no idea if the money that you are investing, and that's your hard-earned money. You've worked hard for that money whether, you know, wherever it came from, like that, it's not easy to part with that by any stretch. And so you want to make sure going into it ahead of time that this investment is going to make you money. So why real estate is different from some of the other, you know, asset classes and investing avenues that are out there. And what's awesome about buying rental property is, and I said, I kind of alluded to this, we actually can know before we invest our money, before before we sign on the dotted line, before we buy that property, 
we should know what a pretty predictable return is going to be on that property. And that's probably one of the my favorite things about investing in rental property is that, you know, you can sit down and if you put in the work, like I mentioned last night with kind of doing the due diligence and really getting the right numbers so that you can run a proper and thorough property analysis, all things being equal, you should make that return that you calculate ahead of time. Now, granted, there's things that happen, right? There are natural disasters, depending on where you live. Luckily, in Western Pennsylvania, we don't have to worry about that so much. But, if, you know, if you're in California and having to deal with earthquakes or Florida and hurricanes or those sorts of things, the Midwest and tornadoes, yes, there are natural disasters that could wreak havoc on your property, right? That's why we get insurance. Um, you could have a tenant come in and totally destroy the property. I mean, to a certain extent, there are a few things that you cannot control. But the nice thing about with tenants is that if you have a really good screening process in place, in most cases, you're going to be okay, right? So you are going to know going into this what a property is going to make you, which again is pretty sweet. So I just want to stop and jot for a second. In the comment section, let me know what type of return on investment you're shooting for in your own investing. So, you know, and maybe let me see if it's the next slide. Yeah. So real quick, let me kind of give you this slide. I should have had this slide before the stop and jot. But, you know, investment averages tend to be, you know, the stock market on an average, if you look at data from like 150 years, you're looking at potentially like a 7%. When you're looking at bonds, you're looking as low as 2%. Real estate over you know a long period of time can be in that same range as the stock market, seven, eight percent, but a lot of people are it's it's ten percent up. And you can't really put a hard number with real estate because it's different for everybody. Like I said um the other night in the training, some of our properties give us twenty percent plus return on investment per property. And I think as an average, we're in the like low 20s in terms of our entire portfolio of what it returns us. So, you know, you can shoot for bigger numbers. Um, but I'd love to know in the comment section, let me know what type of return are you shooting for? Um, I have many people in the community that are good with like a 10, 12% return. And in that case, you know, maybe they're hiring property management and they want it to truly be passive income. Um, they don't necessarily want to be working for it. Um, because there is some work that goes into it. I mean, even investing in rental property, if you're going to choose to self-manage your properties, I'm not, I will not lie to you and say it's totally passive because it's not. Things happen and there's work that you have to do, phone calls that you have to make, follow up, screening, all that kind of stuff. So there's definitely some work that is involved. Um, so it's not totally passive. It can be, uh, <laughs> Christy says 20 sounds great, 20% sounds great to me, 50% would be even better, but is that realistic? I would say a 50% return on your investment is probably not that realistic. Um, that is really, 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 really high. I don't know if, I don't know if I've met anyone who probably has that. Not to say that they're not out there, but at least in our community, um, you know, I think the realistic range is probably more so between like, 10 to 15, 10 to 20. Um, you know, Kirk and I have grown at a slower pace because we are really picky about our deals. So if we didn't have such high expectations and looked for, you know, deals that are like 20%-ish, um, we probably could have a lot more in our portfolio, but we're really picky and that's kind of that the avenue that we went. I will say, Christy, on that note, I don't know if you've listened to the podcast. I'd have to look up what number it is. Um, but I'm not going to say that they're not out there because Kirk and I recorded a podcast a couple of years ago. It was one of the earlier ones that we did, um, where we, it was shortly after we moved to Western, back to Western Pennsylvania. And he went and spent an entire day with an investor who was basically unloading all of his properties. And it was a deal. It was like a, like, uh, you pick five properties out of the 70 that he owned or whatever, and you could get those five properties for like a fixed rate. Right. So Kirk spent the entire day um, driving around with this guy and looked at all the properties and the the deal that he was offering us would have made us probably between like a 70 and 80 percent return on investment. And I can tell you after him, Kirk spending the day with him, he came home and said, I would never do that. And, you know, and and explain to me and all that. I'm not going to get into that here, but I'm, I'm I guess I'm like giving you. 
uh, a teaser for the podcast episode. It is podcast 12, why we walked away from a deal that yielded us an 80% ROI. I'll put a link to it in the comment section afterwards, but I think it will give you some insight into it and some clarity maybe as you're just getting started. Um, some things to think about when it comes to investing in sometimes the, the return isn't worth the hassle or the headaches. So definitely I'll put a link to that in the show notes, Melissa, eight to 10 percent because it's a place near where I work. Absolutely. And so you might want to give up a little bit of that return for something that works right location. Like I said, we gave up that that deal because it just didn't work for us. And you can listen to the podcast episode to hear all the details on it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things that you have to weigh. You can't just look at that percentage in isolation and make a decision. While that percentage is going to be a huge part of your decision, there are a lot of other things that weigh into it. Um, and I think that podcast episode will give you some insight. So I'll go ahead and put that in there. Um, and I think, Melissa, you bring up a good point about um, location, you know, being helping and being a part of that as well. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual numbers um, of doing a return on investment calculation. So let's take a look at some numbers. If we had monthly rental income of $1,000 and then that would give us a total gross yearly income of $12,000, right? $1,000 a month gives us $12,000 a year. Let's say after all of our expenses were paid and our loan payments were paid, we had a net yearly income. So this was cash in our bank account of $4,600, right? And I actually pulled these numbers from one of the one of our properties that we own. All right, so you take that net yearly income down here, that $4,600, and you divide it by your total cash invested. So this is the formula for a return, for calculating return on investment. It's net yearly income divided by total cash invested. So our total cash invested, this included um, down payment, this included closing costs, and this included some rent of light renovations that we did at the beginning when we bought this property. So when you divide that out, you get a 21.3% return on investment. Now, here I didn't include um, things like depreciation and mortgage interest reduction. So those are some of those non-feely things that we don't necessarily see in our bank accounts every month but perks and benefits to investing in rental property. So when you you know throw that stuff in, that return could even end up being a little bit higher. Um, but generally speaking, a cash on cash return on investment calculation is that net yearly income divided by your total cash invested. And that's how you figure out your, your return on investment. Now, the nice thing about it is tomorrow, and actually I'm gonna give you a link to it tonight, here at the end, I'm going to give you a link to our um, property analyzer that we use that is, you know, we formulated it. So actually all you have to do is throw your numbers in and it will do all the calculations for you. But I think it's important for you to be able to just know the basic formula, net yearly income divided by total cash invested gives you that ROI. Okay, so this is what <clears throat> I'm excited about. As I'm going here, if you have questions, again, throw them in the comment section. And I will get to them and stop if they're related to what I'm talking about. If not, I'll get to them at the end. Um, I want to actually now show you a comparison. And this is going to get back to what Christy was saying earlier about should I just look for a low price property. So I want to show you a comparison. And I actually pulled this. Um, I used this example in um, a blog post that I have on the website as well. I mean, I may have shared that with all with y'all in, um, in emails prior to starting this challenge, but I want to show you two deals and I want to show you how you kind of have to start thinking as an investor. So, all right. The moral of this comparison is that the lower price property, right, the lower purchase price isn't always a better deal. So while, you know, we can get blinded, especially when we're just starting off with, oh, I need to get something that's, you know, super cheap, super cheap, super cheap. Um, I want to kind of help you see that maybe sometimes that isn't the, the best way to go about it, or at least to take the blinders off and so that you look at the whole picture. So let's take a look at these two deals. For this one, the first property is a single family home ranch style, three bedrooms, one bath, located in a town of about 15,000 people um, west of Pittsburgh. It is located within one of the stronger school districts in, in the area. Uh, many individuals who live in the area are employed by local hospitals, school districts. There's a university. There's a lot of coal mining, oil and gas industry, and then just your normal local small businesses, right? So this gives you a general feel for the community that you're going to invest in, which is another really big thing that I harp on is really knowing the communities that you're going to invest in. So the basic numbers of the property, the property 
property is listed at $99,900. And if I were to go after this deal, right, my target acquisition price, because I know the market and I know what local, or I'm sorry, not local, but recent properties sold for, I would be shooting to acquire this property at $91,500. So that's the basics. So if you take a look, this is a screenshot actually from our property analyzer that you'll be playing around with tomorrow. Um, you can see here that the purchase price, I put in that target acquisition price of 91,500. We'd be using um, financing with 20% down. You can kind of see here, um, we have the loan amount, the interest rate of 5%, 30 year term, closing costs about $2,000, the annual property tax. And again, this is an actual property deal that I pulled in for this example. Annual property tax, 2520, annual insurance, 500. Upfront expenses, we'd probably put about $1,000 into just doing some light fixes, some, some cosmetic things. Um, and so if you come over here and look to the right at the, the monthly breakdown, you can see the PI, principal and interest, you can see the property taxes per month, the insurance, we would be doing the management, the tenants, because it's a single family property, would be paying all of the utilities, so that's zero out of our pocket. Um, maintenance we take care of, and it's not in an HOA. So you're looking at a total all in at $645. Now, the monthly rental income that this property could demand in this town is about $750 on average. And you know, when we run numbers, we run on the lower end. So like maybe the range was 750 to 825. We're going to run it at 750 because <clears throat> If it works at 750, it's obviously going to work at 825. And I would rather, I would rather when I run my numbers, be conservative and not be overzealous about assuming that I can get the higher number, right? I would rather be safe than sorry. So 750, you can see the cash flow is $105 a month, which gives us the net yearly income of about $1,265 and a return on investment of 5.94%, right? So here, a $91,000 property, that doesn't seem to be too expensive. For people who live in really expensive areas, you're probably like, what, that's crazy? Um, but yeah, that's not a very expensive property, but you can see that the return on investment, that percentage, even though it was a lower priced property, because the rent, you, the rental demand and the rental income that you can demand is not that high in that area, it doesn't necessarily matter that the property is so low because you have to look at the numbers congruently and together. You can't just assume that a lower priced property is going to be a better investment and give you a higher ROI. Um, so you can kind of see here, this is again a screenshot, what the monthly income is versus the expenses, the ROI, and then the five and 10 year outlook as to what you would be making over the course of that. So that's deal one. Questions, comments, throw them in the comment section. I'm gonna go ahead and show you deal two. All right, so deal two is a two bedroom, one bath townhouse. So again, a single family dwelling. These are both single family dwellings, so we're not comparing a single family to a multi both single family dwellings. This property is located in a town of about 2,500 people um, located northwest of DC. So this is actually another area where we invest. Um, it is located right off a major interstate highway. It's a few miles from a university. There's hospital systems, manufacturing companies. Actually, a lot of people who live in that area commute to DC for work. So that's kind of the general feel for the area where this townhouse is. So the basic numbers for this property are the target or the list price is 109,900 and the target acquisition price is $101,500. So you can see that there's a difference. In the last deal, our target acquisition price was I believe 91,500. Here it's 101,500. So there's a $10,000 difference, right, between the higher and the lower price property. Now, when we look at the actual number breakdown in this example, we see, again, purchase price, down payment. I kept all that stuff the same. The down payment's the same. Interest rate's the same. Mortgage length is the same. Um, closing costs are the same. Property taxes, you'll see, are much less in this area, where in the first deal, they were twenty five over $2,500. In this town, the property taxes are actually only $586. So that makes a huge difference when it comes to um, analyzing deals and just buying properties is taxes. That plays into a major part of your, you know, eating into your cash flow. And then the annual insurance is 300. I kept it the same with going in and doing $1,000 of light renovations. 
So you can see over to the right, the monthly expenses, the principal and interest, tax, insurance. Again, we would be managing it. They would be paying utilities. There is a condo fee. So we do have an added expense for the monthly expenses. So here we're looking at an all-in of $550. Now, the monthly rental income that you could demand for this property is $950. And again, I ran that on the low end. You could probably go up to $1,000, if not you know, $1,025. So you're looking at cash flow, positive cash flow each month of $400, your net yearly income just over $4,800, and you're looking at a return on investment of 20%, right? Almost 21%. So you see here between the comparison between the two deals, I don't think I have to ask the question, which one would you buy in the sense of, you know, if we're looking at this from the perspective of the return on investment, and that's what you should be looking at. So sometimes the moral of the story is that sometimes the lower price property doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to give you the higher ROI, right? Sometimes going with a little bit higher quality property or maybe in a little bit better location and so it costs a little bit more might actually allow you to be able to you know earn a higher ROI so if this makes sense let me know in the comments section if you can kind of see the comparison and see the point that I'm trying to make here Christy let me know if this kind of gets to that idea of should you just focus on a lower price property um, I hope that you can see here that it's more than just the the list price or the sale price of the property there's so many things to consider again property tax was a major thing that you spent an extra two thousand dollars a year in property taxes in deal one than you did on deal two so knowing those sorts of things when you're starting to research an area where you're going to invest in is really important it's kind of knowing the average taxes for the various types of properties so again we're, we're running that roi we have to you know focus on the big picture we can't just look at a percentage and say i'm going to put my blinders on and i'm only going to you know accept properties that are this return on investment all right, so you can see here again, we are looking at almost a 21% ROI, $400 a month cash flow. You can see the five and 10 year outlook as well. All right, so as a result, if we were choosing between these two deals, we obviously hands down would ultimately choose deal two because of the ROI despite it being a higher purchase price. So yes, we would have had to put a little bit more money down out of pocket, but it would be worth it because we're going to make more money in the process, right? All right, so your, I hope that this makes sense. That kind of wraps up our idea or our um, training on understanding return on investment tonight. Again, if you have questions, throw them in the comment section while I go over a few housekeeping things here at the end of this training. Um, I do want to point you in a couple of directions tonight. So if you have questions, if something's not quite making sense or if it does make sense, throw them in the comment section and I will get to them here in the next minute or two. Um, all right, so your assignment for tonight is using the listing and the numbers that I provided for you last night um, or in the workbook, the sample listing that I have. I want you just practicing calculating the ROI for that sample property, right? So take a look at um, what your total income would be from that, right? And just kind of play around with calculating the ROI. Um, again, tomorrow night, not often are you going to have to maybe do this just by paper or by hand. Um, because if you do have a sweet tool, and I know, again, you're going to get access to our free analyzer, um, but if you have a sweet tool, there's a lot of calculators um, that you can even download for apps on your phone where you can throw these numbers in. Um, so go ahead and just kind of play around with that. Make sure that you know that formula inside and out. And I also want to point you in the direction of actually grabbing our property analyzer and getting it set up for tomorrow night's training. So this link is also in your challenge workbook. So if you take a look at that, you can click it. Or if you want to, um, I put it in the, like the, I never know what to call that at the top, like the description area of the video or the, or the of the post, I guess. I never know what to call that, that area. But it says grab the property analyzer for tomorrow's training. If you click on that, I'm going to, click on it and it's gonna hopefully take me there I never know I'm on my husband's computer so I never know sometimes all right so it's going to bring you in to the property analyzer this property analyzer we had recently updated and upgraded we moved it from just Excel 
um, to actually Google spreadsheets. That way you could access it on the web. Um, when you do access it, when you pull it up, and I will go over this tomorrow, but I'm going to let you know tonight. That way, if you want to play around with it, you can. What you will need to do is click on file and click on make a copy. And once you do that, you'll name it, you know, property analyzer, and you'll save it to your drive. And that's going to allow you to edit it. Okay. If you, if you just open it up, oops, sorry. If you just open it up and you try to edit it, Without doing that, you're not going to be able to, right? Because we have, you know, private things on there so that no one else can come in and edit it. You just want to make a copy. Once you make a copy and it saves to your drive, um, then you can make as many changes as you want to it. Um, Andy, you asked, do you use different spreadsheets to evaluate multis? Yes, we do. And actually, in the property analyzer, if you go down to the bottom, I don't know if you can see my mouse on the video, but if you go down to the bottle, we bottle, bottom, we have three different spreadsheets. We have the single family, we have a multi unit one that allows you to do up to four units, since that's typically where people are is the residential area up to four units. There's also one for student rentals because we invest in student rentals. Um, where we live, we live in a college town, and so we've added some of those to our portfolio, and so we actually have included those in there, a spreadsheet for that as well, because it is a little bit of a different calculation. You're typically collecting rent on a semester basis and not on a monthly basis, and so you know the spreadsheets are just set up for the way that the rental income is, is brought in. So yes, we do do that, Andy, I hope that helps. And you'll have access to that. As soon as you click on that link and make a copy, you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to do that. So I'm glad this makes sense. Again, if you're watching this after and not watching it live, please still put comments in the comment section. I will be in answering those tomorrow um, and getting back to you. Other questions tomorrow night, again, we will be um, going over how to actually analyze a potential property for cash flow. So I will be walking you through, it'll be a tutorial, we'll have listings up, I'll have the analyzer up, and I'll walk you through how I actually go through and analyze a property on a weekly basis. You know, I'm doing this multiple times a week when I see deals come up. And so I'm gonna walk you through it so you can see exactly how I do it tomorrow. So again, I appreciate you taking the time to be here with me tonight. I always enjoy you know, getting on here and talking shop and answering questions. So feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all or if anything didn't make sense. Um, and until tomorrow, um, have a great day. And until next time, happy investing.